Hi everyone, Gene here with Mahalo.com. One of my favorite schools of design is typography. Words are everywhere. In Photoshop, the foundation of everything that we're going to create in words begins in the character panel. So we'll start off by going to the window menu and scrolling down here to where it says character. Just click on the character. That brings up the character panel where we find all of the different font controls. I'm going to go through these kind of in order here. First we have the font name, and if we click on that it shows us an example of what the font will look like once we select it. Immediately as you can see in the main area, it will change the font to whatever we have selected. Whoops. Right next to that we have the styles that are natively available in the font. Styles are bold, italic, regular, underline. And in this case, Trajan Pro only has regular and bold built in. What that means is that this drop-down menu here draws from the actual font file itself. So when the person creating the font creates a regular, a bold, and an italic, all three of those are going to show up in this menu. Also, if there are several different varieties of font, sometimes the creator includes those. Like there would be Trajan Pro Angled, Trajan Pro Curve, Trajan Pro Standard. All those might appear in here as well, depending on how creative the font maker got with his font. Right below that we have the size and spacing options. There are a few size options here that you're going to use regularly, and for anything else, you can either highlight this text and type in the font size that you'd like. If you type in a font that's too big, Photoshop is going to tell you that it can only accept a value between .01 and 1296. With the size 1296 font, we can't no longer see what we're working with, so I'm going to drop this back down to 24, and we see character panel again. We can also change the font size by clicking and dragging the T icon next to the font size. From here, I'm going to drop down diagonally, and we'll take a look at the tracking options. The tracking represents the space between the characters, so if we pull this up, you can see that each one of our characters is now further spaced apart than it was before. Then I'll drop this back down to zero. Right above the tracking, we'll find the leading. For that, I'm going to need several lines of text because the leading represents the spacing between different lines of text. If we come down to the next section, we have the transform options. We can make the characters bigger vertically, bigger horizontally. We can change the color. And then we have this final option, which is baseline shift. For baseline shift, I'm going to highlight a couple of these letters because this is the distance from the initial line of type. And as you can see, uh, when I do highlight the letters, you can see the baseline represented here by the black line that's beneath each letter. So then I'll go over here and adjust the baseline shift, and you can see that now the panel appears way above the baseline. Below the transform options, we have the forced character properties. Selecting any of these options will have Adobe create character styles even if they don't exist within the font file. So we talked about the character styles in the drop-down menu, italic, bold, or bold italic up here. But if they're not created, Photoshop will force the characters to emulate that style just by selecting one of these icons. So if we select a font that doesn't have any particular style, as you can see the style drop-down is even grayed out here because the author only made a regular style for this font, we can force it to become bold, italic, we can force all the characters to be capital letters, uh, if we shut that off, we can force all the characters to be capital letters, but anything that's a lowercase letter will still appear smaller than the capitalized letters. Right next to that option are the superscript and the subscript options, so for that I'm going to highlight another area. Here's the superscript. Or we can click on subscript, and that'll drop it below the baseline. Our final two options in this section of the menu are underline and strike through. Last thing we're going to talk about is the anti-aliasing method. Anti-aliasing controls the amount of pixelation that is visible. Here's a simple image that illustrates anti-aliasing better than words can. Essentially, the character on the left is a font that is not anti-aliased, and the letter on the right has been anti-aliased. As you can see, close up the letter on the right looks a little bit fuzzy on the edges, whereas the letter on the left looks crisp, but it's awfully jagged. The further we zoom out, even though there are blurry spots, this appears to be more smooth, whereas the letter on the left is now showing all of its jagged parts pretty obviously. 
So if we take our original words and we apply different anti-aliasing types to them, Photoshop is going to give you different results based on what you pick. And you can see each one of these is a lot more crisp and clear than with no anti-aliasing. You can see all the little jagged edges on the various characters. There is one font type that you never want to anti-alias at all though. And this font type was created specifically to be viewed at a pixel level. They're called pixel fonts, and most of them are extremely tiny, ranging from 5 pixels to 12 pixels. Now I have one of these loaded in here. We're going to drop down to Wendy. And you can see, at 18 point, this looks kind of crappy. So if we select our pixel font and then drop it down to the size that it was created at, which in this case I know is 10 point, and then we take our image and we go to the view menu here and view actual pixels, you can see that the character panel more text here is really crisp now. Even though there are some jagged edges, you have to understand that when this is printed out, it's going to be extremely tiny. And if we start adding aliasing to this, all it does is get blurry and makes it look a little bit worse. Normal fonts are going to become illegible at smaller sizes without anti-aliasing, but pixel fonts are specifically built on the pixel level so that it's completely readable at extremely small sizes. And these fonts in particular become illegible if you add anti-aliasing. That's all for now. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and send any questions that you might have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.